Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, May 29th, 2011, and this is an update from the lab on the Mueller Motor replication inspired by Romero UK. Uh, this afternoon I've been spent a lot of time trying to wind coils, uh, met with some failure and some success. The coil winding jig that I put together is working out very well. Um, I have completed yesterday two uh, scaled down replications of the actual Mueller motor coil design. They are a stepped coil design and uh, they are assembled to the ferrite stator cores um, already in, in one of the positions. The, uh, the rotor, I have uh, built up the center of the rotor hub so that the rotor sits perfectly square on the shaft, on the axle shaft now, and it spins perfectly true uh, I have virtually no measurable wobble whatsoever. I spun this thing up with, uh, with my dr uh, DeWalt drill up to about 1400 RPM to get it started. And then using my Dremel tool, I spun it up to uh, roughly 6000 RPM a couple of times. And one of those times I actually uh, attached my oscilloscope to it and measured the voltage output. And at 6,000 RPM, I'm getting approximately 18 volts peak to peak on the Mueller coil design that's already in place in the, uh, in the uh, magnetic dynamo. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? I have uh, a digital tachometer that I'm using to measure the speed of the, of the device. There's uh, reflective tape on one, one part of the rotor that the digital tachometer picks up. And you'll notice I also have end caps, three quarter inch PVC end caps on the neodymium magnets that, back, that, that are mounted to the backs of the stator poles to balance out the cogging effect of the, of the rotor inside. Um, quite frankly, I was just being a little too careless and I frequently had my tools slam up against the magnets and if I didn't do something I knew I was eventually going to break those magnets. Now um, on the topic of magnets, remember we talked a little bit about safety and how you should orient the device and stand stand it at, a, at a right angle to the device so that in case the magnets fly out they're not going to fly directly at you. Alright, well <clears throat> when I was assembling these these magnets to the back of the stator poles I was just taking magnets and separating them from the stack as they shipped and they ship with little plastic washers in between to keep them from coming all the way together because once they are all the way together they're very difficult to get apart uh, and as I was doing this one of the one of the plastic washers popped out and two of the magnets came all the way together with a piece of my thumb in between and a piece of my middle finger where the meat is nice and soft you know um, so if you're a little squeamish don't look at this next picture but uh, this, is what, this is what happens when, when you allow two dimium magnets to come together and you're holding them improperly. Uh, so please be advised, neodymium magnets are very strong. These are not very big magnets. They are only three quarters of an inch outside diameter and three eighths of an inch in uh, thickness. For those of you on metric, that's roughly 10, uh, 10 millimeters by 20 millimeters. Not big magnets, still very strong, still deserve a lot of respect. Please be careful when dealing with neodymium magnets. That's all I can say. Um, I also uh, wound a different type of coil this afternoon. Uh, this, this coil here has 160 turns, whereas the Mueller, Mueller coils have 97. This one has 160. This is just a straight layered coil where I layered it back and forth on the coil winding jig. My first attempt at winding this coil failed because once I, once I took it out of the coil winding jig, the, uh, the end of the bobbin wanted to, wanted to pull right off because the windings were compressing. Somebody in the Justin TV live chat room suggested that I look at a YouTube video in where the gentleman showed he wound his coils for a, uh, a wind dynamo, a uh, wind turbine dynamo, and um, would wind two layers, put three strips of five minute epoxy, and then keep winding additional layers. Every two layers he would put three little three little beads of five minute epoxy. And that's what I've done and uh, we'll see how that holds together. So uh, I guess uh, I guess that's about it. Project is moving along at a very at a pretty good pace but like I said it gets boring now 
now that I'm starting to wind the coils. Once I have a few different sets of coils configured a few different ways, um, I'll be doing some tests on those coils and, uh, I, and uh, of course I'll have to build the electronics in order to get the motor spinning again. I almost burned out my Dremel spinning this thing up to 6000 RPM because the Dremel does not like to put out a lot of torque. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to do that again un until I actually have the uh, pulsing motor circuit assembled and, and working. That's all for now from the lab. I uh, appreciate everybody watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you will. Please tell your friends about the projects that I'm working on. Uh, not just the Mueller Motor Project, but HHO and even the garden. Uh, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun and I enjoy bringing this to you. Hope you have an enjoyable Memorial Day tomorrow, May 30th. Peace, everyone.